right. Subject of the day, a request. Thank you very much, Norman. Let's see if I can do this justice. Let's talk about stalling orchids and what is that all about. I will also talk about setback of orchids because I find them very, very much linked. Stalling results in setback and setback results in stalling. So thank you for joining me and I hope that I do this subject justice. And as always, if there's any confusion and I don't circle back around a thought, then please mention that in the comments below. And I'd be very happy to qualify something afterwards because it can be a little bit like, what's the difference between one and the other? And there are so many different examples. I may not cover them all, but I have some examples of how to explain stalling and setback. So remember, the comments are there to bring me back down and, and qualify a thought. When it comes to stalling an orchid, you can do that whether you get a new orchid in or whether you have an orchid already in your collection that you are repotting. And you can stall an orchid, first of all, it doesn't matter whether it's weak or whether it's a strong and healthy orchid. The wrong timing of a repot will stall an orchid and that is always comes hand in hand with roots, growing roots, new growth. If the timing is off, the orchid is stalled. And then depending on the strength of the orchid, it can also result in setback. So if you don't have the roots, growing to accommodate a weak orchid when you repot it, you will set it back. First of all, it will stall because it's trying to get accustomed to the new medium. And long term, while it's trying to survive with whatever is going on or not going on in the pot, it will be set back because it is not strong. Not every orchid that is timed badly on a repot will be set back. If you have a very strong orchid with a lot of structures in the back for storage, you will stall it, but you won't set it back. So I got some very weak epidendrums two years ago. And on the left is the pseudoepidendrum with a melanor something name. I'll put a pop up. And here's the Embryi crossed with Capricorn Nu. They were very weak. What I should have done is wait for the orchid to acclimate and then see that it produces new roots before repotting so that I don't stall the orchid. And in a case of a weak orchid, I set it back as well. However, sometimes it, it cannot be helped. If you get a weak orchid, maybe it is weak because of the media it has arrived in. So you have to intervene and you just have to cut your losses and say, I'm doing what I know is better for the orchid now, long-term, than it would be to stay in the pot because what if the orchid doesn't respond? What if that media is so bad already that actually leaving it in it will not be beneficial either way? In my case, back in the day, I was just eager to clean up the orchids and I wasn't checking the media so much. I just wanted to get them into my setup. So these two epidendrum crosses have been in this setup for two years and they were stalled and set back because they're weak and then they didn't have energy to grow. So the acclimating process was much, much longer. I only have one at this point where I can see we are now starting to at least respond to the climate, to the media. And I saw earlier in the season that there were roots growing in there because the orchid was weak already, I didn't mess with it. Ideally, take it out, clean it up, and then pot it up again, and then let it grow and settle in permanently. But I didn't in this case because they were weak. If I have a stalled orchid that has a lot of structures and I can see the new growth is growing new roots, then I will go for it and repot it and it'll be fine. The pseudobulbs might actually shrivel in the back, 
but the orchid will recover and be fine because the new roots are there to start and support whatever is above the pot. So that's stalled. Usually it happens when you have weak orchids coming in, the timing is wrong, acclimatization needs to happen, and none of these factors have kicked in and the orchid just grinds to a massive halt. It won't die necessarily, it can. There are no guarantees with weak orchids, no guarantees, but you need to be able to judge the media if it is worth the risk leaving it in the media that it came in, as opposed to you going for it and really, really being on top of keeping them happiest given the circumstances. So in my case, it was a lot of flushing, even though I don't think I had roots in there, I'm just keeping the oxygen going. You can also set back an orchid, even though it was doing well for you. Now, that my, is my example here with my Nani Puakea Dokashima. We saw in an earlier repot, this is not scale anymore, all right? This is just damage here. But we saw in an early repot that I had left it way too long and the orchid had dumped the roots in this setup. So I had a very vigorous orchid growing really well and it finally bloomed for me. But because it had dumped all the roots and there was not much to work with anymore, I have set it back, which is different to stalling because it is growing new growths, but it won't grow the new growths to the same height or strength as the previous growths. You can see the little growths here. They're all like half up. That is setback. That is when you have, you know, enough orchid to work with. It's going to survive, but it, now it's going to take another two years probably before it blooms again, simply because of it has to regenerate a root system before it can actually grow structures that are blooming size. That's the setback example as opposed to stalling. The orchid is still active, it's still doing something, just not as vigorous as it would have if I had gotten the timing right. So you can set back an orchid in your collection at any given time if the timing is wrong or if something has gone wrong with the root system. Pests will set an orchid back as well, very badly, because same thing, it's weakening the orchid. It hasn't got enough substance to photosynthesize. So if you have a great root system and a great orchid and you get an infestation of pests, it will set the orchid back. Not necessarily stall it, but it will set it back. If you've got all the combinations of not a good root system, and you've set the orchid back, the structures are weak. If I got an infestation on one of the two epidendrums, I would probably lose it because it is stalled, it is set back, it is weak. But in this case, if there were to come an infestation, I would also be able to manage bringing the orchid out of it with a positive outcome because of all the structures. There's enough storage in the orchid to be able to feed a lead. Another thing is, here for example, is a setback orchid that is also stalled. Even though I waited for the right timing with, my, with this twinkle, this is the white, white fantasy, yeah. The red fantasy is doing great, the cinnamon fantasy is doing mediocre, this is the white fantasy. And the other two I repotted when I felt like it because I didn't like what the media was in. I didn't like what the media was in in this one either, but I didn't see any signs of proactive new growth, nothing. So I waited until such a time that I saw new growths actually happening on the orchid. What was I just saying? Weak orchid, pests, and then it'll take the orchid down. You see that? Let's just get rid of this while we're at it. I will not have this orchid infested by scale 
it's struggling as it is. But I waited for this orchid to actually grow new growth. And then I wait, then I repotted it. And still, it did not adapt to the setup at all. It is as if I hadn't done anything for at least the entire season. And I'm sorry that now I'm a little bit distracted, but first, of, first and foremost, no pests. If I can see them, they have to come off. But it just uh, unfortunately goes to show and goes to prove what I was just saying, how pests can help take an orchid down, especially when it's weak, stalled, and not necessarily set back. Again, not because it's set back, because it is stalled and weak. And pests seem to find them quickly. But now that I know that there are signs of it, they won't be there for long. But you can see how the structures have no sustenance at all. Totally desiccated, despite waiting for new growth. So this orchid is totally set back, not stalled because it has new growths coming. But you can see there is no substance to them until such a time that the roots can grow and get into the pot and then it will recover. And I'm going to wait for as long as it takes with this white fantasy for it to adapt into this media, this environment. I might lose the orchid. Now it's not, it's not something I want to have happen, but I can replace her, no problem. If it was something that was precious to me, then I would be very cautious about how I would put it into an ICU situation for it to acclimatize. So this one, is set back. It was a healthy orchid when I got it. I waited for the new growth to come, anticipating new roots would then just take off into the media, and it didn't. If it were stalled, I would not have any new growths at all. So this is a setback example. Another setback example is my Oncidium Oncostele wildcat. And this is me as well, doing something with an orchid that was absolutely fine. Please do not worry about my leaves. My oncidiums get that way and I don't normally cut them off until such a time that maybe the whole leaf is yellow. But this is a very, very setback orchid because I messed it up. I didn't keep the roots wet enough and it was a healthy orchid before. It is not stalled because it's growing new growths and it has storage capacity in the back here. So that's totally different to when you get an orchid and then you repot it and it is out of season, it doesn't have roots, it also has a weak appearance to it, then you just stall it. But in this case, the repot was too late. I wasn't on top of the watering. I have set this orchid back it is not stalled. Another example of an orchid that is in perma setback mode, at least that's what I see it as. Two factors here as a differential. This is a Retara Francis Fox. You can see how desiccated the back bulbs are. I have storage organs that really should support this orchid really well but it's not happening because it's not growing roots. It is absolutely not a vigorous grower. I have another Retara Francis Fox that is doing much better, but it's taken two years to actually grow a growth that makes sense. This one has bloomed for me and it looks like it's going to bloom for me again if it doesn't go woody. But you see the growth from two years ago. So that's this year's growth last year's growth two years ago it just went woody the leaves completely died off and nothing amounted to it and maybe the same will happen here we shall see normally this blooms for me in march but this is an example that it may not be us having the problem this could be an example of the orchid is stalled set back and it's just a dud not to be confused with something that you know that you can grow well and it's just not working for you because 
other orchids are working for you. And as a, as a matter of fact, I have two of these. I know the other one has now completely acclimatized. And from now on in, it's going to just grow and get better and better. This one could be a dud. It is still stalled and it is totally set back simply because there is no proactive root growth in here. And I, I don't understand. And until I don't get into the rhizome, until then, I won't know if it's a bigger issue than just the orchid not wanting to grow. I have hope for this year that this is going to hold on to the leaves and eventually I'll get some roots and eventually this piece will also start to progress. But there is a difference of getting a dud that will never do well for you, no matter what you do, as opposed to stalling an orchid because of the circumstances surrounding it being weak, wrong time of year, no root growth, changing the media. Those are the differences, in my opinion, <clears throat> that you can have setback, which will result in smaller growth, like with the Oncostele back here and my Nanipuakea Dogashima. That is setback. And two years of absolutely nothing, that's a stall. So I hope that I kind of cleared that up, the differences or how you can get both things to happen at the same time and what to look out for in an orchid, considering is, it, is my orchid stalling? Is it setback? Is it a combination of both or is it a dud? I don't know. I guess I will find out in the comments and I would appreciate that as well because it can be I wouldn't say confusing, but because they're so closely linked, the symptoms look so similar, one could not exactly say which is which. The only big difference as of a setback orchid as opposed to a stalled one is the fact the setback orchid is still growing something of a structure, just not as big as before, whereas a stalled one is just doing absolutely nothing. And one more thing, not to be confused with an orchid that is in rest mode. If we get something from the other side of the hemisphere imported into our collection, we might be in spring, the orchid is in winter. So the orchid is going according to its biological clock, dormant, whereas our climate is waking up. And if your orchid comes from another hemisphere and hasn't done anything for six to eight months and starts to wake up at around fall, winter, that is part of the acclimatizing process. It'll take another year and a half maybe for its biological clock to tick over and then respond according to our seasons. So that's the difference. That is not setback. That is just knowing where did the orchid come from originally as opposed to where am, is my collection located in the hemispheres. Difference totally. So I just thought I would quickly add that because we are getting, you know, imports from elsewhere, not just within our radius of the world. And that is not setback. That is just biological clock having not acclimated at all yet. So yeah, chitty chatty. I hope that that was clarifying a few questions. Thank you for the request, Norman. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your patience until this video came out. And anything else, anybody else, any questions whatsoever, woohoo! Comments are down below and I look forward to them as always. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care, stay safe, bye.